Hey everybody, it's Andrew Martin coming to you with a new video on Thursday, December 1st. Happy December, happy Thursday. I can't believe that I'm already recording this December video. Truth be told, it's actually Wednesday, November 30th, but by the time I release this, it's gonna be December 1st, and so I'm just pretending um, that we're speaking on Thursday. And I can't believe that we're here. I mean, here we are crossing the threshold into 2017. Here we are crossing the threshold into the very end of the month or the very end of the year. And it's, it's blowing my mind. And the strangest thing is, is how, I don't know how simple the energies for December seem, but there's a trick there because simple is not easy. And that's what we're going to get into into this month's energy forecast for December 2016 is the mastery of simplicity, really the understanding now that we are moving from the healing phase, right? And we are moving into the transformational phase. And yes, there will always be new layers to peel back and there will always be a new level of discovery and there will always be more expansion. And in that expansion, there will be things that continue to drop away throughout our experience because it is eternal, it is infinite. And as I've said before, when you're climbing the ladder of your life through your spiritual journey, the rung that you're reaching for inevitably becomes the rung that you're standing on. So it is always a matter of growth and expansion and reaching new levels of awareness. But the simplicity of it can be deceiving. And I find that this is what many of us are dealing with right now. And in, in session over the past couple of weeks since the last video that I did, it is astounding to me, once again, the beauty of how spirit works. And that pretty much everyone that's coming through in this, in this batch of clients that I've been working with recently have similar issues. And that issue or that challenge or that lesson is all sort of built around this idea of the simplicity of being a master creator and what it really means to emerge as the divine human and how simplicity really is the truth of it. But when we begin to strip away all of the external stuff, all of the fancy stuff, all of the decorations and the trimmings and the flourishes, and we're left with the, the core fundamental truth. And that is so simple that can be the most challenging thing. And the simplest way that I know how to explain life in general, and especially the spiritual path, once we're awakened and we're aware, even if we're completely confused and have no idea what's going on, we're still awake and aware, right? But as simple as it gets is in each and every moment, and I've said this before, in each and every moment with every single choice, we are either moving away from our truth or towards it. And the only way we ever know often by which, which way we are moving is by how we feel. When I'm moving away from my truth, I feel tangled, I feel dense, I feel heavy, I feel confused, I feel angry, I feel frustrated, I feel resistance, I feel like I'm the one pushing the boulder up the hill again. And when I'm moving towards my truth, even if I feel a little anxious or nervous or perhaps even a little afraid because I'm moving into the unknown, but when I'm moving towards my truth, it feels expansive. It feels exciting. It feels interesting. It feels inviting. It makes me curious to want to know more. So in the end, and this is as simple as it gets, people, in the end, every single choice can be reduced down to two options. I'm either choosing from fear and creating from fear, which is moving away from my truth, or I'm choosing from love and I'm creating from love, which is moving towards my truth. And that's as simple as it gets. I have two choices. When you boil anything down at the bottom of it all, I guarantee you, is the decision of am I choosing fear or am I choosing love? And love is the truth and fear is the illusion. So it's time to break up with the illusion. And that's what December is calling us to do. I've been talking about this for a while, this whole idea about, you know, and this is what the guides have been saying is that, you know, healing versus transformation and that healing is for the human. Healing moves us backwards. Healing moves us backwards. Transformation moves us forwards. And it's not about, about better or worse, good or bad. It's just saying that for the human experience and for the human self, and the human vehicle, it is important for me to heal, right? If my arm is broken, I want to return it to the previous state when it was unbroken. So I'm moving backwards with this idea that somehow the previous state was better than the current one. 
And when I'm healing, I'm going back to when I was five years old and I'm healing that issue. Or I'm going back to my relationship with my mother. Or I'm going back to that time when my dad or my sister or my brother or my boyfriend or my wife or whoever said something or did something. I'm going back to that previous lifetime. I'm going back to another point in my experience to bring all aspects of myself forward so that we're all moving in the same direction. We're all reading from the same script. We're all telling the same story. And once we are all present and accounted for, we're all kind of standing around going, okay, all the aspects of Andrew are here. Now what? Now begins the transformation and the simplicity of what it means to be a master creator, which is what we all are. And we're all in the various stages of remembrance of that. The simplicity of being a master creator is so clear, but to the mind, it can be so confusing and so daunting and so terrifying and so challenging to believe that it really can be that simple. So it's time to break up with the illusion, the illusion, which is the fear, the illusion, the illusion, which is the idea that I am just human. The illusion is that, you know, this is, this is it. I'm born, I live, and then I die. And then it's all over. The illusion is that Andrew is the only part of me that exists. The illusion is that I am separate from anything. I am, the illusion is that I am separate from you. The illusion is that I can harm you without harming myself. The illusion is that whatever I choose for myself is only for me and that I'm not connected to everything else and that my choices and my actions don't influence anybody else and they don't create a collective experience or consciousness. The illusion is fear. The illusion is that any of this ever ends. The illusion is that there's ever a finish line. The illusion is somehow because you are evil that I am good or because you are wrong that I am right. Right? So all of these things, the illusion is that the human will, the will of my mind and my ego is what creates my reality. The illusion is that I am a victim of my experience or that things happen to me. The biggest illusion of all is that anything outside of me has any power over me. Struggle, pain, evil, suffering, terror, anxiety, all of these are born from the belief that the illusion is real. And that is huge. That is huge, right? All these horrible things that we can talk about, the list of horrible things, crimes, atrocities, horrible experiences that humanity has gone through, either individually or collectively. These are all created from actions that are stemming from the idea that the illusion is real that I am separate from God, that I am separate from you, that I am separate from myself, that I'm doing this on my own, that I am helpless, that I'm isolated, that I'm alone, that I'm powerless. These are all the illusion and these are all the source of all of the negative things or the unwanted aspects that we label as bad or evil or dark in our human experience. But spirit is saying, all of this is for you and all of this is from you. And all of this is an opportunity to remember the truth of who you are and fear can be our greatest teacher. But let's be very clear, fear is not your ally. Fear is not your friend. Fear is not here to have a good time and put its arm around you and honestly say, I love you. Fear is here to be your teacher. Fear is saying, look, I'm a con man and I am a con man of the highest caliber and I will always be a liar and I'm always gonna be a slippery son of a bitch and I am always, always a con man. But that's what I am here to do for you. I am here to teach you the truth, which is fear will always be a lie and fear will always only end in more fear. That's all it is. Fear is a closed ecosystem. It is a closed loop. It is a, a means to its own end, which is to propagate and spread and create more fear. That's the only reason fear exists. But the beautiful thing about fear is that it stands in contrast to the truth which is endless and infinite and the love and the joy and the hope and the, the, you know, the, the unity and the community and the excitement and the fulfillment and all the things that expand us and grow us and call us forward and upward. These are the things that stand in contrast to the, to the illusion of fear. So fear is our greatest teacher, but fear is not your friend. And so now as we move into December, what we are being called to do is to master the truth, which is in every single choice, in every single moment, I'm either plugging into fear or I'm plugging into truth. I'm plugging into love. I'm plugging into joy. I'm plugging into compassion or I'm plugging into fear. And that's as simple as it gets. 
But the difficulty arises when we've got those old stories, when the mind is still active and the mind is saying, hey, wait a minute, what about all these things? Remember when you used to be afraid of this? Remember when you used to wake up at you know two in the morning stressed out of your mind? Remember when you couldn't sleep at all? Remember when this horrible thing happened? Remember that old story? Remember what a jerk that guy was? Remember when that woman you know emasculated you and made you feel t- completely inferior and useless? Remember when your mother did this horrible thing? Rem- remember when your father was so cold and distant or whatever it is? The fear is always present. But the mastery of it says, and the image that I've been given is someone standing toe to toe, nose to nose, face to face with their shadow. And the shadow is snarling and snapping its teeth and doing everything it can to inspire you to believe the fear, to inspire you to believe the illusion, to inspire you that just this one last time you need to wrestle with me, you need to tangle with me. And we just stand and we look at that shadow self, we look at that negative aspect, we look at that fear, that lie, that bully, that negative voice, and we just breathe a sigh of relief and say, I love you. I love you. I love you and you have no power over me. I love you and you have no control over me. I love you and I don't believe you anymore. And thank you so much for being one of my greatest teachers. And I love you. And you can snarl and snap and froth at the mouth all you want, but I'm just not believing you anymore. And more importantly, most importantly, I am not letting you command me to action because I am plugged into the truth. I am plugged into love. And this is where that outlet is. When I am plugged into this, This is when everything outside of me begins to change and reorient and rewrite and reprogram itself. I am the master creator of my experience and I am the one asserting myself within my experience. And like I talked about in the last, in the last couple of videos that the divine human is one that asserts himself, asserts herself as the truth of what she is and who she is. And she understands that what she sees outside of her in front of her has zero bearing on what the core of her experience is. And the reminder that the the spiritual experience is no guarantee that I will not have difficulties, that I will not have challenges, that I will not, you know, be faced with anger or fear or doubt or uncertainty or, you know, a lack of clarity or not knowing or that something out of nowhere is just going to come into my experience. The spiritual path doesn't doesn't prevent any of that happening, but what it does guarantee is that I always have the choice. Am I plugged into fear? Am I plugged into the illusion? Do I believe that the answer is somehow out here and I'm going to spend the next, you know, what, five, ten years of my life looking for the plug? Or am I going to remember that the truth is in here and that I can plug into love and that I can plug into truth here? And that is the simplicity. There is no other answer than just being present with what is. Peace comes from aligning with where you are. Now alignment, see this is the thing and we've gotten this confused. We think that alignment means I have to like it. Alignment means I have to want it. Alignment means I have to approve of it. Alignment means that I have to be really excited about it and post on Facebook about it. No, alignment means that I am going with the flow. That I am not crossways or incongruent to my experience. That the flow is constant. The flow is eternal. The flow is infinite. The flow is and I am either moving with it or I'm not. And so allowing myself to align with where I am is where I find peace. And the minute that I align with the flow, it begins to carry me again. And then I am lifted by the flow. And then once I am aligned with the flow, I use the flow as my power, as my energy, because I tap into it and I'm congruent with it and I'm moving with it. And now this power and this energy and this strength and this divine spark is moving through me. And it is aligned with what is inside of me, which is the same thing. The flow runs through me because I am the flow. And yeah, I have this human container that sometimes kind of messes things up and it gets in the way, right? The mind being a part of that human container. But man, the truth is is that I am the flow. It is that same river that runs through me. And when I align with it, then I become part of it. And then I can use it to create as a tool to create my experience. So the question for December is, Can you let what you need be what you want? Can you? Can you let what you need be what you want? Because what we're seeing through December 
is final purges of old stuff, final, you know, uh, integrations of new stuff. It is really, you know, and you can hear in my voice, I have a head cold. Over the past month or past three weeks, I've had the fever. I've had this head cold. I've been sneezing and congested like crazy, but I'm not sick. I know that I'm not sick because I don't feel sick. I have no symptoms other than sneezing and a little bit of a stuffiness and then the fever a couple of day, a couple of weeks ago. But I'm not sick. I know that this is just the clearing of old templates, the clearing of old programs, so that when I step into 2017, my, my slate is as clean as it can possibly be. But can I let what I want, what I need, be what I want? Can I want what I need? Because if what I need is to purge this last stuff, if what I need is to stand face to face with my shadow one more time and give it a kiss and say I love you and mean it and not be afraid of it, if what I need is patience, if what I need is to just kind of hang out and wait for things to start to build momentum, if what I need is to chill out and be cool for a minute while what it is that is going to receive me, right? My future potential just may not be created yet and I'm moving towards it. What I need may be to finally face that fear or that anger or the doubt or the, you know, the, the feelings of isolation or, or, you know, unworthiness or whatever the thing is that you need. It is coming to you this month and your job is to be the master and to bless it and to accept it and to receive it and let what you need be what you want. And you say, I align with what is present right now. I accept my circumstances as they are right now. And the truth of it is, is that when I accept my circumstances as they are right now, I free myself of resistance. And that's when things can change in an instant. Because when I am connected to the flow, I am the flow. I remember the truth of that flow runs through me. Why do you continue to hold yourself hostage? saying that the only way you're ever going to be happy is if life lines up things in ABC order, one, two, three order. It's got to look like this. It's got to smell like this. It's got to sound like this. It's got to taste like this. It's got to bring me this much money, this many things. And if it doesn't happen exactly like this, I will not be happy. Well, you know what? Enjoy your fucking miserable life then. <laughs> because as a, you know, the divine asserts itself into our life and it says, I know the truth of who you are. And this is the new benchmark. I know the truth of who you are because I am you and you are me. And the only reason the human experience exists is for the expansion and the evolution of the soul and the spirit. Somehow we got it twisted and we thought that the human experience was the pinnacle of all things. No. The soul says, I want to know what it's like to be a human. And specifically, I want to know what it's like to be Andrew. So I'm going to emerge as Andrew and let Andrew be the means to my end. Let Andrew be the vehicle that I can know myself through as Andrew. And when I accept that, then I can say, okay, I remember. All right, I chose to be here. I volunteered to come into this lifetime. There's some things here that I got to learn or that I got to contend with or that I just got to let it move through me. But I don't have to hold myself hostage to say that unless my life looks like this, I'm never going to be happy. Or until it looks like this, I'm not going to be happy because the divine has asserted itself into my life. And it says, Andrew, dude, this is the truth of who you are. And so here's the new benchmark. And so anything that's below this, anything that is less than love, anything that is less than truth, anything that is less than joy or satisfaction or completion or expansion or whatever it is, can't stand. If it's less than love, it ain't getting through. So the divine is not interested in our small diminished ideas. The divine is not interested in indulging the ego one more second to say, I want it now and this is how I want it. The divine says, okay, whatever. I've got nothing, you know, time doesn't exist and I'm infinite and eternal so I can wait. But the divine basically at this point is saying you are a master and it is important for you to remember that. And when you allow your life to bring to you what you need, and you can even take that a bit further and say, all right, it's time for me to want what I need because it's, you know, once I get through this experience, then what's on the other side of it is waiting for me, but it's only ever the eternal now. And so stop saying that I can't be happy until this thing happens because what you are going through right now requires your attention because you are a master and you are being reminded of that through the lesson of simplicity. Can you just let what is be and love it? 
can you let the thing that you say you don't want or that you're the most afraid of or that you've been resisting the, you know, the whole time you've been saying, all right, anything but this, I don't want this, I don't want this, I don't want this, I guarantee you that's the this, that is the thing that's asking for your compassion and your love and your acceptance. And so it's not about good or bad, wanted or unwanted. It is about saying, okay, what is the value of my experience right here, right now? Sure, I don't want it, right? I'm not really jazzed about it. I don't like it, right? Like me and my financial stuff, I'm finally beginning to move through it. But it's been very, very challenging for me. And I know that I need this. I need to learn how to manage my money effectively and with intention so that it can work for me. But until I understand it, that's not going to happen. And so I need, from my perspective of where I'm headed and where I'm going, and you know, my divine self and partnership with him now, and he's asserted himself and said, dude, you got to get clear on this, right? Whatever it is energetically that you have wrapped up in your beliefs about money and abundance and what's sustainable and what you're capable of and what you deserve, this is something you got to get clear with. And so at some point I have to say, all right, I need this, so I may as well want it because I can continue to resist it and push it away, but it's the thing that's in front of me that's asking for my compassion, it's asking for my attention, and it's asking for my understanding. So ask yourself, what is the thing that is so dearly requiring your attention right now? And maybe it is that you just gotta hang out and not do anything. Maybe it is that you gotta sit with those really uncomfortable, sticky emotions that you just don't wanna feel or hear or see. Maybe it's the unknown. Maybe you've left the relationship or the job and you don't know what's on the other side, but you know it's something you've got to trust that. It is about trusting this and saying, okay, what is the value of my situation? It's only the ego that says I want this or I don't or this is good or bad or that I will, you know, this is right or wrong. The, the human self is just, or the divine self is just saying, hey, this is a new experience. I've never had this before. I've never had this experience as Andrew before and I can't wait to, to have it. I can't wait to learn from it. I can't wait to gather the data and the energy and the frequency and the understanding of what will come to me through this experience as Andrew. So stop torturing yourself and holding yourself hostage and saying it will only be good or happy or successful when it looks like this and begin to ask yourself, what is the value of where I am right now? Because here is the master level. When we can find value in whatever is present, regardless of if it's wanted or unwanted or desirable or undesirable, when we can allow ourselves to be present with it and to look at it and to observe it and to acknowledge it and love it and accept it for what it is, then we allow ourselves to remain present and to keep this inner connection strong. Because this is the thing, can you be the signal in the static? Can you be the one out of a hundred people that choose compassion and love over and over and over? Because that's what it takes to be a master. That's what it takes is to stare the, you know, the enemy or the bad guy or the shadow self, whatever you want to call it, to stare that shadow in the face and love it and accept it and have compassion for it. It will immediately be transformed by your willingness to see it through the higher place. When you bring the perspective of your divine self to no matter what exists in front of you or what you experience, you immediately transform it to the higher place. So especially when we feel lost, because in life, sometimes it's necessary to be lost. Let's face it. I've been saying this forever. There's no guarantee that it's going to be easy, convenient, or comfortable. And if that's what you're waiting for, get comfortable because it's not always going to be that way. You came here for an experience that would challenge you on par with your level as a, with your abilities as a master creator. That's why you came. And that didn't guarantee that it was going to be easy, convenient, or comfortable. So sometimes you need to be lost. Sometimes you've got to disorient to reorient it. Sometimes you've got to unplug before you plug into the new thing. You've got to be transformed. If you know you're being shot out of the cannon from point A to point B, we're kind of in the middle, you know, we're still in the wind right now. We're still kind of spinning untethered because the newness of 2017 is still coming in and calling us forward. But that doesn't mean that we're not being carried by those energies. It doesn't mean that we're not still connected in here. And no matter what you see, see or experience outside of you, can you choose to consistently plug into the truth, which is the love and the eternal, infinite, powerful creature that you are? Because sometimes in life, it is necessary for us to be lost. And so at the time of being lost, it is the most challenging to remain connected to the inner truth because that's when it becomes the easiest to believe the fears in your head. 
right? Because the fear is just going to come in and say, see, I told you the spiritual stuff is stupid. It's all a bunch of bullshit, hogwash. What the hell are you talking about? And you say, hello, my little fear monger. <laughs> hello, my little judge, Judy. Hello, my little critical asshole. What's going on? Nice to see you. I love you. And you go about your day and you proceed asserting yourself in the truth of who you are, even if you don't see outside of you what you think you need. So stop beating yourself up and telling yourself that because, and this is what I'm seeing, pretty much every single client is in this weird in-between phase and myself included. I'm still not entirely sure where I'm going to be living next. I'm still not entirely sure where my work is taking me. Things are shifting and I'm just letting it happen because I'm trusting that when I stay connected to here, because here's the thing, it's not about inaction and just kicking back and waiting for it to be delivered to you, right? We've talked about this before. The universe is not Santa Claus. It doesn't come to you based on naughty or nice and the amount of gold stars that you have and you finally get what you want to be granted to you. No, you are the creator of what you are experiencing on some level. And even if you aren't the one who consciously created the experience, you're still the one that gets to create through your response to it. So by allowing life to bring to you what it has for you and you just love it and bless it and you stay connected to here, no matter what, this is where the truth always comes from. So when it's time to make a choice or time to make decision or time to make a move, this will be the thing that inspires you. This is the truth. And this becomes your assistant. This becomes the thing that helps you make it real, right? Because I get the idea and the inspiration from here. And then I say, okay, head, we have some work to do. We got them some things to write. We have some flights to book. We got to look for a new apartment or we, you know, we got to do whatever. So it is about allowing the mind, body, and spirit to be moving in the same direction led by the heart. Can you let the heart lead you? Can you trust it? Can you say yes even when you don't see any evidence that what you want is really showing up and when everything around you looks like this is not what I fucking wanted, I don't know how I got here. You love it and you have compassion for it and you accept it. And then the minute that it is accepted, that's when it can begin to transform. And we are in the midst of this transformational process. We've done the healing and now we are transforming. And yeah, there's a little bit of physical stuff still being worked out, right? Because the density of energy is always the last thing. So energy comes in non-physical and then by the time it works its way through the physical density of physicality in the vessel, the body or the thing, right? The thing that I can touch, taste, hear or smell or see. It just takes a little bit longer. So we're working with a couple of things here in December. Number one, the density of the body, just letting the body make its final attunements and adjustments and integrations as we are catapulted into 2017. And also above all else, remaining plugged into the truth. So ask yourself in every moment when you feel lost and you feel unsure, what am I plugged into? Because this old idea, this old fear-based idea that if I'm not hustling, someone else is getting it. And then if I give it up, that means someone else gets it. And I, if I go without, you know, someone can't have it because that means that I go without. And scarcity and competition and lack and, and fear and danger and threats. All of these things are the illusion. So you can observe that. It can get up in your face and you can see it, but you don't have to let it be the thing that motivates you or inspires to action. Let it be the thing that motivates you, inspires you to love and compassion. And then you will see it transformed. And then one of two things will happen. It will either join you in the vibration that you are holding, your higher frequency, or it will be spun out of your reality. But creating in the moment, from the moment, of the moment, is the truth of how it works in these higher frequencies. And so when we learn and remember how to let this be our default setting, that I'm just grooving along at this frequency all of the time. And so I'm always ready because I'm always plugged into love and truth. I'm always plugged into compassion and joy and openness and willingness and non-judgment of the experience. And when I'm just tuned into here, then no matter what comes to me, it immediately informs me of what, you know, okay. Do you want more of this? Go in this direction. This is the choice. Yes or no, left or right. And I let this be the thing that helps me decide. But this is the simplicity. And the challenge of simplicity is that it really is that easy. How you feel about it is eons more important than what it actually is. How you feel about the choice is light years more important than, how, than what the choice is. How you feel about your options and what you choose to be the clay that you're you know, molding it from or the gas that you've got in the tank or the thing that you're plugged into. That's what creates the reality. 
So you don't have to let fear be your teacher anymore. You can let fear be the reminder of who you used to be. And then you just look at it and say, I love you. <laughs> so that's the message for December. I'm sure there'll be an update in the middle, but it really is about what are you plugged into? And are you able to let yourself believe that it really is that simple? And it's not always about effort or action. Yes, effort and action are important, but unless they're divinely inspired, what's the point? That's just the mind trying to force it to be something that it's not or that it's not ready to be. So let what you need be what you want. Matt Kahn, who some of you may know, is a spiritual mentor and friend of mine. Um, and one of the things that he said to me years ago when he was my mentor was, without the desire to escape, there is no prison. So when we allow ourselves to accept what life is bringing to us, and rather than looking at it as good or bad, wanted or unwanted, or shitty or amazing, right? We just judge it. Oh God, I don't want that. Instead of that, ask yourself, what is the value here? And what am I plugged into? Because if I am plugged into the illusion, which is everything outside of me, and I believe that it's real, man, that's when all sorts of wonky stuff starts to happen. But when I am choosing to plug into love and to the truth, and I can say, wow, man, these are some intense circumstances. This is not, you know, this is no joke. This is intense. And the temptation to go into fear and hide under the bed is really, really real right now. But I can tune into here, and I can ask for the guidance and the feedback and the insight and the answers from here then it always is a different game. It's always a different vibe. And so no matter what you see happening outside of you, if it doesn't feel like truth for you, trust that because you're the only one knows, that knows what your truth feels like. Thank you as always for watching. Go to my website, thelightedones.com. Subscribe below. Go to my Instagram and Facebook, The Lighted Ones as well. I am having on, oh gosh, what day is it? December um, 11th, I think it is. The Let me just open my calendar real quick. Um, it's a Sunday, the new soul expansion. Yes, yeah, Sunday, December 11th from 12 to 2 West Coast time. It'll be posted on my Facebook. You can also find it in my newsletter. If you're subscribed, I'll put the link in there. Um, or you can go to meetup.com and look for self-empowerment through spirit in Seattle. Um, and you can sign up there for the event. It's going to be two hours, 12 to 2. You get a free MP3, 50 bu or excuse me, 40 bucks for two hours. It's an amazing deal. It's limited to 50 people. Last time we sold out really, really fast and it was maxed out. So if you're interested, check it out. This is going to be a, a, um, a, an event, a, a two-hour seminar, basically around this whole idea of the simplicity of mastery and how do I make it through these energies and what's on tap for 2017. So we've got a lot of stuff to cover. It's going to be a really, really awesome one. Um, so go check that out. You can buy tickets through the meetup site. Um, that's it. I mean, it's an amazing time, but it's, dece it's deceptive when we look at how simple things really are because the mind is going to say, no, man, you got to get in there and you got to mix it up. You got to do, you got to, no, not necessarily. Allow yourself to be cared for. Allow yourself to go easy. Choose compassion whenever you can. Choose love whenever you can. And especially when it feels difficult to choose compassion and love because that's what December is asking is can we continue to gently assert ourselves in our truth? That's it. I love you. I'll talk to you soon. Have a good day. Bye-bye.